You fight well in the old style, but you've caused me enough trouble. Now you face the shredder. Here's your look at the new NECA Toys SDCC 2019 exclusive box set featuring Splinter and Shredder. After waiting in a puddle of radioactive waste, four ordinary reptiles become more than just turtles and are raised by the similarly transformed rat Splinter to become New York City's greatest crime-fighting quartet. Their biggest enemy and Splinter's nemesis is the Shredder, ruthless leader of the Foot Clan, a criminal organization that is terrorizing the city. Yet it's only after Splinter is captured by the Foot that the turtles learn how far back his feud with Shredder goes. Now, we're going to go ahead and get these figures measured off so I can tell you guys how tall each one of the figures stand. While I'm also doing that, I want to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys. The last several reviews that have been doing all the SDCC exclusives, I want to, big, again, a big thank you to NECA Toys who have sent those my way. So I can show you guys some of the stuff, the really cool things that NECA had lined up for this year's Comic-Con. Starting first with the Shredder, uh, the terrifying Shredder stands 7.2. He's really, really scary looking in the film. Even to this day, watching the original Ninja Turtle film, I always find uh, that uh, Oroko Saki is very, very scary in that film. Anyways, get, getting ahead of ourselves. Shredder stands 7.2 inches in height, and that translates then to 18.2 centimeters tall. Obviously, because we have two foot soldiers, I'm not going to do the dimensions on both of those. So we're going to go right, well, we're going to obviously go next to Splinter. Splinter obviously is smaller than all the others. Just how small is he? Taking the Ultra Measuretron 5000 once again, you're looking at a figure that's five inches in height, which works out to be uh, a figure that stands just a little over 12 and a half, 12.7 centimeters tall. And then once again, we're going to go then last and certainly not least, switch that over to inches once again. Get that right there we go we're gonna measure off one of the foot soldiers again being that these are copies to one another they may have some s slight tweaks to paint but the figures themselves are roughly about the same well they are the same figure to one another we'll talk about that in a second uh, the, one of the foot soldiers and therefore two of the foot soldiers stand 6.8 inches each and that switches over let me go ahead and do that right now 17.4 almost 17 and a half centimeters in height if it's also helpful for some size comparisons here uh here are the figures compared with a couple of the movie turtles grabbed a couple of them i got donatello and uh, leonardo certainly if you haven't seen reviews on these guys these ones right here previously on this channel shame 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 but they are there if you guys wanted to check them out it's just phenomenal figures from NECA toys so thrilled the fact that they continued on not only giving us the quarter scale versions of shredder and a foot soldier recently reviews of those will also be coming up soon uh, but the fact that we are getting ourselves smaller scale really ideally for me I prefer the smaller seven inch figures myself because you can put a lot more of them while you know the story of the glory of love and uh, for me myself i like to display the smaller figures because i can put a lot more of them on my shelves now there's also a fair bit of accessories to cover off on so we'll have a look at these first and foremost and of course we're going to get into extensively having a look at each one of the figures the first thing you get included or the first thing we're going to look at in this included video is the rack nice rack by the way thank you uh, it's a ninja storage rack and again all the longer uh, weapons of which we will be looking at in a second can be mounted onto the front uh, things like for example let's look at some of the smaller things things like for example the nunchaku i suppose you could drape over one of the racks like so it's not to say that you have to run all the weapons across from one post to one post 
things like the nunchuck, for example, could, I guess, ideally just be draped over the edge. There's not really anything uh, on the side, little hooks or anything like that. So in cases like, oh, like the Psy, for example, there's nothing really on the side for the Psy uh, in which you can display them. So most, if not all, the usefulness of the rack is for displaying the larger items that we're going to be looking at in a second. It's a plastic rack. Uh, done here in all black plastic but I mean even if you like look really close to it you can even see that there is a wood grain to it ind indicating that this would have been forged from wood and not a, a metal beam uh, some of the weapons of course we can display on that is a bow staff a simple black motif really uh, is on most if not all the accessories they're kind of balancing between silver and black in the case of the bow staff, for example, it's done all in black plastic. And uh, as you can see, you could probably guess how this kind of goes. It's just going to be draping from one post to the other post of the storage rack. Other things that come included with it. Now, again, all of these really can also be wielded from all the figures except for Splinter. Splinter doesn't really have the necessary means. I don't think he would be strong enough also to be wielding. That's not fair. I'm sorry. Sorry, Splinter. He also, they also include a ninja battle axe. Really neat design for this. Something, again, you could probably have displayed, oh, I don't know, with the shredder, for example. Uh, Some nice paint detail has been done to it. So it's not simply just silver paint over top of black plastic. You can see that there's a little bit of flex and a little bit of uh, just kind of wear to it. Some dry brushing added to it. So it does look like it's a light, a, more of an older weapon. And again, we can put that on the rack. Look at me organizing things. Put that on the rack. The battle axe does sit a little bit more awkwardly because it's a little bit shorter. And for the fact that the bladed portion uh, kind of starts cutting into where those two posts are going to be. I'm just going to kind of keep revisiting the fact that we have that rack over there. Also included is almost looking like a javelin. Uh, it's like a two-tipped... I don't know what the actual term is for this particular weapon. I was trying to do some research so I would have the accurate names for you guys. Um, it, it's basically like a, a pointed staff. It, it does really kind of look like a javelin. Still, again, the same color treatment of the black and then the silvers uh, incorporated to these sides there. Where can that go? That can go to the rack. Just put that over there. We're kind of now winding down the rack displayable things. There's not really a lot of stuff that can go on the rack. Again, like things like, for example, a nunchuck. You, the nunchuck you can actually put maybe on the post, for example. But again, really just a nice little back piece. This is something that kind of sit in the background while all of your figures sit in the foreground. I guess the last other thing, and that's not 100% true, we could incorporate also the katana, which is also done in the black handle silver blade. And uh, you can also put that on there as well. Just drape that on like that. So again, that is pretty much in a nutshell, all the weapons that would be allowed. Not that they're not all the other ones can't be allowed, but those are the only ones that really do fit well uh, when it comes to the rack itself. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the smaller accessories. We're going to still keep going. We're marathoning this. Uh, included as well, two variations of the nunchaku, or nunchuck, as most people are probably more familiar with. This one, I think, is the one that uh, splinter wields, if I'm not mistaken, that flips uh, shredder over the edge of the building. Oh, come on. It's not a spoiler now. That movie was from the 90s. Uh, this one doesn't have as much give to it. It looks like it's all been cast in black plastic, while this silver nunchaku has been done in silver and black. And this one actually has a chain to it, a real working chain. So again, some nice little accessories. Could you include those with the foot soldier? Of course you can. Absolutely. Also included in this... Uh, this epic unboxing of figures for the accessories, you get yourself a small blade. 
Now I was trying to find a place where this blade could go other than for of course the supplied sheath that can fit into the side. It doesn't go anywhere from what I can see on Shredder's leg. There's not enough of an open gap on his calf uh, blades for example. Nor do I see a section anywhere on the foot soldiers. Maybe I am missing something but there's nothing that I can see in which it would be supporting uh, that additional. I thought there was like, I guess you could in theory, let me kind of backtrack my previous thoughts being that these sashes these belts are like an elasticized fabric i guess in theory you could really just put the sheath tuck that in there let me just go ahead and do that just to show you i'm reluctant of course doing this too too often i don't want to keep pulling and stretching on the elastic because again, I don't want that to give way and snap on me. But I guess you could put that in there. You could put like the nunchuck, for example, in tucked inside, kind of like they did in the movie. And I guess also you could put the supply, oh, I just gave it away. You could put also the two supply psi also in there as well. So there's a couple of different options there for you. Splinter and shredder. Splinter, I guess, does have the little uh, belt around uh, his gi, I believe. Uh, you could probably tuck it in there as well. Okay, so we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Also included in accessory-wise is a pair of Psy. We already talked about this. The Psy are silver with black handles and seem to be identical Psy with the silver and black. A pair of Psy. Uh, it's not plural with S, but there's the two Psy. You can put those also to the side. And I guess last but certainly not least, the last other thing is it comes, this set comes with a Tonfa. This is a Tonfa Ninja Baton, kind of very similar to a nightstick, really. Um, the ninjas would hold it kind of like this and fight with it. The Tonfa uh, Ninja Baton actually is, again, just a really neat accompanying piece. Could you display it really on the rack? Well, let's give it a try. Again, there's not really, I guess you could just kind of drape it to the side like that if you wanted to. But uh, those were all the accessories. The other thing that didn't come included with, now that I've also uh, had some time to digest it, it also comes with an extra uh, bandana. Now this is the back of the bandana and obviously would go with the two foot soldiers. This is just a swap out option. We'll probably leave that, discuss that at the time that we are having a look at the foot soldiers. Eight minutes in, eight minutes in. Let's uh, let's move on to the rest of the figures and well, let's move on to the rest of the review looking at the figures in the set. Yes, yes, I know I also left the box off. We're going to talk about that in a second. We're also going to talk about Splinter's or Shredder's cape and then we're also going to talk about the interchangeable hands in a second. I figured this would be also a good opportunity to kind of look at and examine each one of the figures and then relative to whatever accessories those figures come with We'll talk about those also in a second as well. I want to start this review, surprisingly of all places, with Sh uh, Splinter. He is one of the two figures that I was really the most excited for. Of course, we do get ourselves exclusive foot soldiers as well. This is kind of really a buffet table of delight looking at these brand new four figures from NECA Toys. Now, the real, for me, the price of admission, even though I do love the foot soldiers, is Shredder and Splinter. Splinter does look very accurate to the way he looked in the film. Now he is shackled, which could then come into play talking about the box that also the crate in which Splinter stands atop of while he's shackled by the foot. An interesting thing to talk about for the box itself. For starters, it's made of cardboard. Um, it does cause for a little bit of a problem when getting the figure to stand on it because I just don't feel like there's enough durability to it. I feel like there's a little bit of, of too much of a give uh, to hold the weight of uh, Splinter on top. It's also a little bit more difficult to display the figure on top because he's always doing a balancing act. The tail also comes in a lot of a hand, a, a big hand uh, when it comes to displaying that. And the neat thing about it, though, is that NECA Toys actually put a little label on the side of it, though, that says 33090, which is actually the date, if I'm not mistaken, for when the film was released. And also down below, you've got NECA Toys. So a really nice little nod to the original film. Now, also, this being cardboard, it does uh, has a bit of a sheen to it, sort of distracts it from the fact that it's being a crate. I love the fact that they would have included this. In all honesty, though, I would have loved more so, I think, if this was done in plastic and maybe even add a foot peg on it, where if you put splinter on top, 
because uh, again, like the way he bounces on the crates, he is always prone to falling back. One thing that's also really neat about this particular set, if I just reach off into the black hole of obscurity and I bring in, where's he going? Where's he going with this? I bring in, I'm going to move Shredder out of the way. I'm going to move the foot soldiers out of the way. And I am going to bring in the insert that came included with the box. The neat thing about the insert, though, though it's a little difficult to get it to stand up properly, is that it is the interior in which Splinter is on the crate. So you would imagine the crate would go there. Splinter would go right here. There we go. And then you could have the figure displayed. Now, the thing about this is, as I'm holding this, everything is made out of cardboard. So it's a balancing act, once again, to get the figure to stand on top of the crate. And then on top of that, have a cardboard backdrop, which you pretty much have to have against the wall. If you don't have it against the wall, well, you already know what's going to be happening. This is going to be falling off frequently. But a nice little touch and icing on the cake if you will the Nega toys would include that uh, honestly speaking though i'm gonna just put that back there move that out of the way uh, what i've also would have thought could have been a cool idea too is if NECA had just included a wall space just about this this wide just about this high and it actually had the crate permanently molded so it would have the base the crate and then just a fenced backdrop about this wide. Something you could just permanently display the figure on, and then it would be like a fixed piece, something that, again, they could possibly have done. But as it goes, there is still a displaying option for it. The price of admission, again, is more so the figures, not necessarily the backdrop that he comes included with. Looking at the details for Splinter, he is very accurate to the way he looks in the film. I kind of really felt bad for Splinter, even like watching of the film later on in life as it was older and was able to enjoy it more. Um, it just felt terrible for this poor guy that he was shackled and slapped around by the shredder. Now, he does have shackles on his back. There's really no, nothing that I can see that can connect this to the backdrop. So at least from the front, it looks like he's shackled. And again, you can also aid for that too by putting his arms up. No, he's not getting held up, but you can at least have the arms up so it looks like he's a little bit more like pinned against the wall. If you are interested though, the shackles are removable. Obviously, you maybe if you wanna just display him with the four turtle brothers and you don't wanna have him all the time shackled, these little pins detach from the hole. Simple as that. The chain also is attached just loosely to that peg right here and you can take the shackle completely off. You don't have to keep it on there. The one thing I will say of a concerning nature, I'm gonna just take this off very quickly there. There we go. Here's what the shackle looks like. Uh, there's a hinge, and this is obviously all plastic. It's been aged, which is nice, but attaching it to itself from repeated visits, you might find yourself running the risk of breaking that peg. Decide probably, again, how you want to display the figure. Do you want to display him shackled or without the shackle? Avec, I guess that's with, sans, sans the shackles. I'm going to just go ahead and take both shackles off because we've certainly discussed poor imprisoned splinter long enough. And we can bring those arms down. The one thing I noticed about this arm here is that it's a little difficult to gauge where the joint is. I might actually find myself taking the robe off just so I can get a proper feel for where that joint is. It could either be really stiff or the joint could be flipped the opposite way around. As you can see, the arms hinge out up and down quite easily uh, once you know where the joint is. He has normal articulation for a standard uh, NECA figure, but again, I'm just gonna probably have to take this off. I guess it's kind of like a tattered version of a karategi, or uh, I think it was also a jidogi, which is uh, the term for a ninja robe. Um, so I probably will take this off. I mean, he is what seems to be fully finished underneath. The only reasoning why I didn't take this off is to be honest, between you and me and the other seven people in this room, I have such a tough time tying a knot again, so I probably will take that off at some point. I mean, like I said, it is finished underneath. I don't know why you would want a naked uh, splinter 
uh, hanging out with the Turtle Brothers, but I mean, the option, I guess, is there if you wanted to. Some nice discoloration for his robe, really tattered, kind of is the equivalent of uh, like a burlap type of material. Uh, for his articulation, though, his head rotates all the way around. It is technically on a ball joint, so it hinges up and down and rotates left and right. I kept thinking when I was looking at the mold that that mouth wanted to open. I kept saying to myself, that mouth should open the way it's been molded. But no, it's actually just the way it's been sculpted. It doesn't actually, from what I can see, open or close. It's just really well done to the point where you think you could actually open it up. Uh, the arms do rotate all the way around, of course, with anything being wrapped in fabric. Running the risk of that getting tight can always be the issue. He does have the hinge in the elbow, which can bend the elbow back and forth. It seems like he actually has a double hinge happening in the elbow, and then the hands rotate all the way around, back and forth. He does have what seems to be a waist swivel underneath all of this. The legs go forward and back, out. Underneath all of this, you can kind of see the workings of Splinter being attached by peg joints, and then he's also got standard hinge joints in the leg. Those legs can rotate. And then he also has a ball joint in the actual foot, a ball hinge joint, I should say. And then he also has toe articulation as well. This one toe is a little on the tighter side. This toe right here, a little on the looser side. It's like the odd couple. And then he does have the wire framed tail. Generally speaking, the figure stands generally quite well, but uh, displaying them once again on the crates can be a little bit more problematic. Maybe again, a workaround to that could have been that this could have been all plastic with peg points on the top so that if you had, which he doesn't have, peg holes on the undersides of his feet, you could attach it just like so. Kind of like the Xenomorphs though, the tail of Splinter does come in handy. Having it straight down sort of serves as part of a tripod, if you will, supporting and keeping the figure you're standing upright. It's again just a bit of a balancing act to get him on there. A lot of times you'll just find yourself kind of like crouching the figure forward kind of like that just so the figure actually stands properly onto the crate. So there is Splinter. Uh, much, much uh, amount of time spent on Splinter, but you can see how passionate I am about these particular pieces. Like, this has been a dream come true for the longest time. I've always wanted, like, a company like NECA Toys be helming a property like the original Turtles movie. And now seeing these figures in hand, they've delivered exactly what I've wanted. Splinter then gets revisited by the rest of the Foot Clan, probably reluctantly, I'm sure. Let's have a look at the two Foot Soldiers that also come included with this set. A really neat, again, representation of the original Foot Soldiers. You know, a funny enough story, and I promise I'll make it quite short. I think I was seeing The Wizard, if you could believe it, that's a long time ago, in the movie theater. And they had teased uh, the idea that um, the turtle move, there was going to be a turtle movie out, but up to that point, we didn't have things such as the internet. So you only had to rely on the surprise reveal of movie trailers when you went to go see whatever, again, movie you were going to go see. When I went and saw The Wizard with a friend of mine, uh, they started the trailer and I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, this looks like the Ninja Turtle movie. And then all of a sudden the foot soldiers came out and I kid you not, I swear this is true. I actually saw the foot soldiers and I thought to myself, well, the costumes are okay, but they don't honestly look like the turtles. I swear that's actually my first mindset, the first thing that popped in my head. And I might have even said it to my friend. Of course, then when we finally got the reveal of the turtles in the movie, there they are right there, I was blown away. I didn't even know how they could have done such a thing. Animatronics was a new thing for me back in the day. I thought they just layered a whole bunch of makeup over top of the actor's face. Oh, naive me, so young and so foolish. Anyways, we'll have a look at the two foot soldiers. Looking at them side by side, they seem to be identical to one another. There could be some small nuances different between the two, but they do seem face value to be the same foot soldiers. Maybe the mask is a little bit different between the two. I possibly don't know, but they do look like they are the exact same figure. Now, possibly if we do get ourselves, for example, like a Casey Jones. A Casey Jones would be fantastic because then you could probably unmask one of these 
and you can put Casey Jones' head over top of it. I'm kind of talking ahead, hoping that we're going to get some future releases for these guys. Now, they do have a handful of hands. Uh, the noticeable difference between the foot soldier's hands and Shredder's hands, you can probably see right off the bat, there's a great difference in paint. Even though, like, if you look at them side by side, it almost seems like they are the exact same hand. I even believe these to be the exact same hand. But the difference in color definitely is what makes this one Foot Soldier and this one here Shredder. Obviously, we'll talk about Shredder in a second. Uh, so they do have, like I said, interchangeable hands, simply just a case of popping the hand off out of the socket like so and replacing the new hand, the hand that you want to go with, and uh, you've got yourself always my one of my favorite poses for figures that kind of dynamic hand spread now obviously uh, for these figures to be serviceable as foot soldiers you'd want to be able to also be able to display them with weapons thank goodness the folks over at NECA Toys do give you weapons weapon hands for these they give you a pair so one on either side of the body now really you could also use one on either foot soldier if that makes any sense for displaying the weapons so for example you could take this foot soldier use this hand on this side obviously because thumbsies go in and then you can use the other hand for the other foot soldier so that both of them are still having the necessary means to display them with weapons for example we'll take the battle axe and we'll just kind of pry away the fingers like so fit that into place and you've got yourself instantly a foot soldier that has weapons. Could they probably have given us another pair of swappable hands so that they could have wielded weapons in both hands on both figures? Yes, they probably could, but at the very least, we do get ourselves gripping hands, so thank goodness for that. So you basically get like a pair of spread hands, you get a pair of closed fists, and then you get a, a pair of gripping hands included with the foot soldiers. Now, having a look at the articulation on these, I'm just going to grab the other one. He was just over there. The articulation on the foot soldier is the following. I can't believe I thought this was a turtle at one point. So silly of me. Head rotates all the way around. I was young. I was young. Head rotates up and down, hinges up and down, and also rocks back and forth. He does actually benefit from having two ball joints, one here, one here. So you can actually move the neck a little bit further down than you wanted to. So in case he was, of course, the shredder was dissatisfied with how they succeeded that night. The foot soldiers could have their heads hanging way down low. That's actually kind of a neat look to it. Have the foot soldiers with their heads down. They've disappointed the shredder. I would be terrified if this guy was disappointed in me. Uh, the shoulders hinge out to about there. And uh, they also, the arms rotate back and forth. They're a little on the tight side because this is plastic up here. And they rotate back and forth. Bend at the elbow. Uh, what seems to be a double hinge on the elbow. Though again, I'm just, I got figures with just really tight joints. Again, I'm not complaining at all with tight joints on figures. Hands rotate all the way around depending on which hand you decide to go with. Uh, you have an upper torso ball joint. Legs split forward and back, out. Bend at the knee, double bend actually on the knee, but again, just these joints are a little on the tight side. There's the secondary joint right there. And then he also has, he or she uh, has foot articulation foot articulation and an ankle pivot on this foot soldier and those are the foot soldiers put that figure right to the side and again that sums up in a nutshell the two foot soldiers that come included with these figures i think for possibly another set is the fact that they could give us like a casey jones for example obviously they could give us a casey jones maybe another foot soldier for example and uh, i believe it's tatsu that they could also include there as well so that would pretty much finish up oh and then of course we can't forget april o'neill uh april o'neill yeah i'll be april o'neill one of my early crushes was april o'neill both in the cartoon actually and i might also add in the live action film so let's have a look at the Shredder. What a terrifying menace this guy was. Even seeing him in the initial trailer, I'm like, I don't, I, I probably even had nightmares after the fact of seeing this guy in the film. He had such a commanding presence. 
One thing I like now that I can go back and look at it as an adult. When I first saw it as a kid, I was disappointed in the fact that Shredder looked like this. Where is the purple cape? Why doesn't he look like he does uh, from the, the original cartoon? But then I think to myself now as an adult, I'm glad they stuck with the original color palette for the comic Shredder. He is clad head to toe in this purplish red color, and you probably can see it. He is just covered in glitter. The glitter has likely been molded into the plastic, although the few times that you may pick up the figure, you might get the odd straggler of glitter kind of ending up on your finger, but I think most of it has actually been made into the plastic and then molded from that. The head portrait is stunning. Again, we're going to be having a look at the quarter scale shredder and the quarter scale foot soldier in upcoming reviews, so you guys can stay tuned for those. But uh, one thing I really liked specifically about this shredder was the very long portrait of his helmet, very long top blade here. There's the back section of it, slightly a little more discolored, almost it looks seemingly like there's a little bit of rust happening there. Another thing that I didn't like initially watching as a kid, now look at me as an adult, finding myself kind of criticizing my early opinions as a child, didn't like the fact that he had vented breathing areas on the front of his mask. I kind of wished it was finished all the way. Now that I see the movie again, I kind of like the fact that he does have that. You can kind of see his mouth as he's talking to you, and it just gives him a little extra depth, a little bit more character to his face. Now, like in the film, where you can go ahead and take the face plate off, just like that. There you go. And underneath that, you've got the portrait of Oroko Saki, complete with the shredded claw marks left by Splinter, not Hamanto Yoshi, because after all, in the, in the film here, he actually was a rat. He wasn't the sensei that turned into uh, Splinter. So the claw marks are there present on the front of Oroko Saki's face, Again, just a great looking portrait there. Would I ever display likely this figure like this? Probably not. Probably not. But I like the fact that, of course, NECA Toys does all these things, all these bells and all these whistles. That's what it looks like, by the way, on the inside. This is what it would look like if you were talking as the Shredder and leading the foot soldiers into an attack. This is how you would be talking. You'd be talking through one of these. We're going to go ahead and just put that back onto his face. Sort of a getting it symmetrical sort of can be a bit of a challenge. Um, it does slide into place and it kind of slides more so around his ears. And if you kind of look at his ears, his ears aren't really ears as much as they are pegs. So you're actually putting the mouth onto the ears, which is very strange even when you think about it. Once that is in place, you immediately hear a snapping and the snapping is good. That means it's tabbing onto those two pegs on either sides. See right there on his ears on both sides. This, the helmet is soft plastic. Luckily it hasn't warped at all. But again, just a really great representation of Shredder. This is what I have wanted for so long. You have no idea. Uh, as for the rest of his makeup for his outfit, uh, he does have the Shredder-esque elements to it, of course, the bladed guards on his forearms, on his shoulders, and also down below on his calves. These are all made up of softer plastic, so fear not, you don't have to worry about poking yourself in the eye. I really don't know why you'd be running around with Shredder's blades going so close to your eye. Even if you did, these are soft plastic on all aspects, except for one. All, while all of these are soft plastic, the one thing actually that isn't soft plastic is the blades that are sticking out. They're kind of like the same thickness of plastic as the the blades that come out of the gauntlets for the Predators. They're very, very much the same type of plastic, so you want to be a little careful of that. Shredder does come with uh, some interchangeable hands. We'll just put him down here for a second. Just hold on there. Just hold on there for a second. He does come with two versions of his bladed hand, one with the open hand, one with a partially closed gripping hand for displaying him with a weapon, for example. And uh, like I said, you'll know right off the bat, obviously you'll know right off the bat that these are Shredder's hands for the fact that the this discoloration, like I said, looks a little bit different than the regular foot soldier hand. And just putting them side by side, once again, it seems like they might have reused the same hands. Perfectly fine with that, if it means that we're getting a set like this. 
The other thing he comes included with is uh, an opposing hand. The hand on this side also has a gripping version of the hand and also a dynamic hand spread or finger spread hand. So he comes with those as well. And that pretty much in a nutshell is all the things he comes included with other than for this. That is the Shredder's Cape. Now, we don't see this later into the film, but we certainly most definitely see it at the beginning of the film. And I think we even, this is one of the earliest glances we see of the Shredder, if I'm not mistaken, in the original trailer. You see Shredder walking, and it's like, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, and you see him just dragging this cape behind him. Sort of a garish looking cape, really, when you think about it. It looks like almost tiger print camouflage done in metallic silver. Uh, while all of these look like they are hinges, it's really only on the edges that actually have the wire frames. Everything else is just simply a sewn seam. Here's what it looks like on the inside. You would think that these almost kind of look like pockets. It's just the way the seaming was done, the seams on the outside there. To get this onto Shredder, I mean, you could simply just drape it over top, but he does actually have a clasp. You can see right there, there's a little hook. And on the other side, he's got a loop. Now, to be fair, this can be a little tricky. I find actually it's sometimes easier to pop Shredder's head off, though it's not really intended to come off. The thing about it, though, is you really want to be very careful about these points right here. But that is one thing that you could do is take the head portrait off. Or if you, just like myself, don't really like the idea of popping his head off and running the risk of breaking off, you can just kind of tuck it underneath underneath all of this stuff and if you can get it in there you can hook it onto that clasp sometimes while you're doing this the mouth guard plate will come off we can just go ahead and do that right now save itself the work and effort of having to come off by itself we'll just help it along and uh, this just kind of like i said hooks onto that clasp. it is a little tricky even the handful of times or so that i've done this it is a little on the trickier side because like I said, if you look at it, that loop isn't very big at all. And the clasp, though it is bigger, is still a little tricky to kind of get into that loop. And most definitely it's a little bit difficult as well when you're doing it behind a camera. Something that could be easily accomplished by just simply turning off the camera and uh, doing it behind the scenes. One thing I also noticed too, when I was looking at it, I put it on the wrong clasp. I was trying to do it on the smaller clasp. It's actually in the middle loop right there and it hooks on the place. One thing that actually works to his benefit for the fact that he does have the softer plastic up here is I don't feel as much like I'm running the risk of damaging these blades being the fact he's got the cape over top now the cape is large possibly even in the film it was even a little bit larger still than this but again a nice way to display the figure and the fact that this is also a wire frame means that you can customize the way you want to display it ultimately even though i'm thrilled for the fact that Nakatoys would include something like the cape Shredder, I think, is so personally so cool without the cape, especially at the very end of the film where he's battling the Turtle Brothers, that I probably will just display him without the cape altogether. And again, just want to take that off. Even though these are soft, you want to just be careful because the shoulder pads, I wouldn't want to jeopardize breaking those off by quickly pulling the cape off. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's articulation. His head rotates all the way around, being, again, very careful of those blades on the sides of his helmet head hinges up and down and once again it seems similar to the foot soldier he's got a bowl joint really essentially at the top of the neck going into the socket of the head and then he also has a bowl joint at the base of the neck for some strange reason the collar they've left loose and i'm wondering if the reasoning for that is so that when you are moving the neck if the collar was extremely tight or molded in place it might have limited maybe what you could have done with shredder's head possibly Shoulders hinge out. On this figure, I just, again, noticed that the figure's joints are really stiff. Not so much an issue, once again. Arms move back and forth. He does have the double hinge on the elbow, and he also has the rotation on whatever hands you decide to put into the socket. Upper torso ball joint, similar to the foot soldiers. He also does have the, the sash here, or the belt, done in elasticized fabric, while the bottom underneath here is plastic. 
the legs split, uh, they go forward, they go back, they bend at the knee in two places. Uh, he doesn't have necessarily a rotation in the lower leg, but he does have articulation in the feet. An ankle pivot, they hinge up and down, and unlike the, uh, the splinter, he doesn't have toe articulation. Well, to be fair, actually, neither did the foot soldiers. They have just straight out flat feet. Now you can display Shredder and you can also display, let me just show you here, the foot soldiers uh, in what seems also to be the exact same foot. Maybe the foot is a little bit different from one another, but you can also display these guys, these ones, uh, with display stands. Got a whole bunch of clear NECA display stands just invested into, and I'll probably start making use of those for many of my figure displays. Uh, like I said, Splinter is the only one that doesn't have the afforded peg holes on the underside of his feet. He actually is the character, the figure that I would have hoped could have had uh, foot articulation or uh, foot pegs underneath the articulation of his feet so that he wasn't going to fall over. I guess as it says, as it's all said and done, with his tail straight, like I said, kind of like the Xenomorph, he's doing a balancing act giving him essentially like a tripod, keeping the figure from falling over. Fantastic set once again. A few little things, like I said, I would have probably just changed out. It's probably just done the gone from the cardboard roots of giving the crate instead of probably use plastic. And then just also the icing on the cake would have been a great looking backdrop. Didn't have to be big, maybe just about this wide around splinter where it could have had the, uh, the meshed fence uh, just behind him. Other than that, Absolutely love this set. And again, if you've been collecting the Ninja Turtles, finally, finally in the uh, smaller 7-inch format, there's Leonardo once again. We'll kind of bring in Donatello. Raphael and Michelangelo are somewhere. But uh, the fact that they released these ones and as, as, essentially as a GameStop exclusive kind of can be said for the same for this set right here. It's not going to be a mass-circulated, mass-distributed set. This particular set, like I said, for the time being, is an exclusive to uh, SDCC. And they kind of did the exact same thing with the quarter, the smaller 7-inch turtles that we just looked at just like a few seconds ago. Maybe we may find ourselves also seeing this set show up in places like GameStop, the same similar uh, timeline that ended up happening with those 7-inch turtles too. For San Diego Comic-Con 2019, it seemed the checkoff bucket list for the convention, at least for exclusives, all originated from the NECA table. NECA was turning out some incredible pieces for this year, but I think this one here, this set featuring Shredder, Splinter, and the two foot soldiers, was the must-have. And as a result, people were clamoring to get this set for themselves. And I can understand certainly why. I'm a big fan of the 7-inch Turtles. Now, granted, yes, they did release Shredder and Foot Soldier in a more retail environment, something that was more accessible. But for me, as much as I love the quarter scale, I know a lot of people love quarter scale, my heart and soul for toy collecting seems to reside in like the 7-inch scale. So really hold, held out hope that they were going to give us eventually a, uh, a smaller scale, a 7-inch format of those same figures. And then what did we ultimately get? A reveal, a huge reveal that we were going to be getting an SDCC 2019 release of Shredder, Splinter, and Two Foot Soldiers. And I probably just fell out of my chair when I saw the news. Again, a big thank you. I want to send out a huge thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys for sending this my way. Final looks here. I've kind of got the battle, the final battle between Splinter and Shredder. It did actually draw my attention to one thing. The double blade, that double tipped spear was actually the weapon that Shredder uses at the very end of the film to dispense quickly the four turtle brothers before he finally battles Splinter. So in final looks, I wanted to do a service at least for that weapon and include it at least in Shredder's grip. Speaking of grip, though, uh, one other thing I wish this, this set could have possessed was interchangeable hands for Master Splinter. Granted, yes, you may end up displaying Splinter shackled on top of the crate, but if you want to display him loose, and certainly if you want to display him fighting the Shredder in the final scenes of the film, I think interchangeable hands could have really helped because you could have displayed him with one of the nunchuck, the thing that he ends up uh, eliminating the Shredder with, throwing him over the balcony, the over the edge of the building. This is, of course, now 
partially filling out the TMNT movie line. We've got ourselves four Turtle Brothers, of course. we got now Splinter Shredder and two Foot Soldiers. I guess the only things that are really missing are Casey Jones, Tatsu, and of course uh, April O'Neil. Uh, th those would be ones to definitely add into the set. And maybe you could probably throw in a couple of Foot Soldiers in as well. You never know. Maybe we'll be having this same similar conversation in 2020, uh, as maybe NECA Toys has planned a, a, a follow-up set that's going to include those four figures. At the very least, I hope we do get a t an April O'Neil, Meow, a Tatsu, and uh, a Casey Jones. Maybe even also include the smaller uh, disguised Raphael. Okay, now I'm going really crazy on this. Either way, though, as you probably could guess from the extensive length of this review, I've been really anxiously waiting this one. And now physically in hand, I, I'm just... I'm beside myself for how happy I am with this set. There are a few things that could have been changed, yes, maybe things like crates and stuff like that, but those are small. The greater scope, the greater picture of it all, is the fact that we finally have 7-inch movie turtles from NECA Toys. Again, let that sink in for a second. Today we were, though, having a look at the SDCC 2019 exclusive from NECA Toys that included Splinter, included two foot soldiers and included the very scary looking shredder even in the end of the film where he leaps down to fight the turtles on the rooftop just the way that they have that slowly him just slowly dropping down and he drops down and they have that music playing in the background again i would never want to go toe to toe with this shredder if you manage to pick up this set for yourself or based solely on this review let me know down below what you guys think of this release from NECA toys let's hope we've eventually find this one also surfacing in GameStop because again always the problem with SDCC exclusives once they sell at the cons uh, it's always a nightmare it seems to pick them up after the fact in aftermarkets where scalpers of course are charging an arm and the leg don't forfeit by the way your arm and your leg for this set I can certainly see why you would want to but arms and legs do come in handy it helps you with your everyday duties so don't give up your arm and your leg please don't if you are new to this channel or longtime viewers and you just never got around to doing it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And also, if you want to check out some more NECA reviews, I've got a playlist just for NECA stuff. So feel free, sit down with your TV dinner or whatever it is you're going to be snacking away on. TV dinners, probably. You could do a little bit better than TV dinners. But uh, get a gander at some of my other NECA reviews and let me know what you guys think in those videos. We're going to have a whole bunch of other stuff coming up onto this channel. Just FYI, also, we're going to be doing some more SDCC 2019 exclusives. So if this is really your fancy, a whole lot of more things to feast on your fancy. I don't know. We're, we're, not, we're, we're going to just disband. We're going to just abandon that one altogether. But needless to say... Needless to say, there's a whole going to be a whole bunch of SDCC, SDCC 2019 exclusives. I'm getting tongue-tied here. Coming up soon onto this channel, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.